No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God abides in us and God's love is perfected in us. God is love. Perhaps you've seen online at some point the story of the young boy who was taking a science exam and the question read, for extra credit, what is the strongest force on earth? And although his teacher crossed out his answer, he wrote perhaps the greatest answer imaginable, love. Indeed, as we look at the scripture today, we dive into some of the deep and great territory in our scriptures. Perhaps the three most important words we'll ever come to know, God is love. This tells us not just that God loves, that love is on a list of things that God does, but rather God's essence, God's identity, God's very being is indeed love. I'm going to lean on some broad shoulders now to give some ideas about this kind of love. Maya Angelou tells us that love recognizes no barriers. It jumps hurdles. It leaps fences. It penetrates walls to arrive at its destination full of hope. And Mr. Rogers tells us Love isn't a state of perfect caring. It's an active noun like struggle. To love someone is to strive to accept that person exactly the way he or she is right here and right now. The Apostle Paul tells us love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. To our most bitter opponents, we say, returning hate for hate multiplies hate, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Love is the force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Do to us what you will, and we shall still continue to love you. We cannot in all good conscience obey your unjust laws because non-cooperation with evil is as much a moral obligation as is cooperation with good. Throw us in jail and we shall still love you. Bomb our homes and threaten our children and we shall still love you. Send your hooded perpetrators of violence into our community at the midnight hour and beat us and leave us half dead and we shall still love you. But be ye assured that we will wear you down by our capacity to suffer. One day we shall win freedom, but not only for ourselves. We shall so appeal to your heart and conscience that we shall win you in the process, and our victory will be love's double victory. And finally, from a friend's mother, as he was sharing with her that he was gay. Son, you have many things you will need to worry about in this life, but my loving you is not one of them. Today's scripture proclaims perhaps the most important promise, perhaps the most important three words in our Bible. The ultimate equation of our faith, God is love. But it's important for us to think about love differently than we sometimes do to be sure we understand the reality of this equation. We say, for example, that we love to go to the park, but Maybe if there's a tornado, we don't love to go to the park. God is not that kind of love. 
We say we love our college, but then our college decides to cut the major we're in, and God is not that kind of love. We say that we love our neighbor, but then our neighbor puts up a political sign for somebody we don't support, and we wonder God is not that kind of love. The reality of God's love for us has much less to do with who we are or what our circumstances are and a lot more to do with who God is. God does not only act in love, God is love. It's not just God's doing, it's God's identity, God's being. And God is love, so love is steadfast and God is steadfast. God is love as a force. God is the love that struggles and suffers and weeps and mourns and celebrates and wonders and doubts, a force that strives beside us no matter what. To put it another way, God loves you. God is love and there's absolutely nothing you can do to change that. We see that God is love when God the Father welcomes the prodigal home. Though most of us could reasonably argue that the son did not deserve a party after squandering his inheritance and living recklessly, we see that God's love is unreasonable. It makes no sense. God is extravagantly forgiving and steadfastly compassionate. Love is extravagantly forgiving and steadfastly compassionate. God is love. We see that God is love when God the shepherd won't rest until all 100 sheep are safe within the flock, no matter the journey or the danger that that search might require. Though most of us could likely be satisfied with 99%, though most of us could justify ourselves thinking that sheep should have known better than to wander so far away. We see that God's understanding is unsearchable. God is endlessly faithful and ceaselessly vigilant. So love is endlessly faithful and ceaselessly vigilant. God is love. We see that God, the sower, scatters seed wildly, especially and abundantly on what most of us would consider the most infertile ground. Though most of us would find particular reasons not to waste the seed in some places, we see that God is lavishly inclusive and expansively generous. Love is lavishly inclusive and expansively generous. God gives up on no one. Love gives up on no one. God is love. If God is love, then Love is the way and the truth and the life. Love is the word. Love is our rock. Love is the beginning and the ending. Love is the creator and redeemer and sustainer. Love is the resurrection and the life. Love is the savior. If God is love, then we are all uniquely made in the image of love. To love and serve the world in a way that no one else ever has and that no one else ever could. First Plymouth has a simple mission to increase the love of God and neighbor, and yet the church can't realize that mission as an institution. Churches can't love. Only we can do that. And with God's help, only you and I can make our church's mission a reality in our community and in this world. And the greatest miracle, the most wondrous mystery of it all, is that God created you and God created me just the way you are and just the way I am because the world wasn't finding quite enough love without us. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God abides in us and God's love is perfected in us. So let's go into the world this day to courageously, extravagantly do our part to perfect the love that God has born in us. 
May it be so this day and forevermore. Alleluia.